MicroWrap 100 is an open source 3D printer project by Jeremy Woodchick. And this is step two where we'll be attaching everything we need to the bottom of the printer. The first thing we'll need to do is attach the 20 tooth GT2 pulley to the Y motor. If the shaft of the motor has a flat spot, make sure you align one of the screws with that flat spot. MicroWrap project includes an 11 millimeter electronics mount shown here, it's that blue part. And we're gonna use that as a guide to align our pulley with relationship to the motor. When you have it so that the top of the guide is equal with the bottom of the teeth of the, of the pulley, you're ready to tighten it up. We're going to put the motor on the printer. Notice the rear left corner. We want to make sure that when we attach the motor, the motor connector, which protrudes out of the bottom, make sure it faces that rear left corner. These are 10 millimeter M3 screws. Now the bottom plate also includes the Z motor, but first we have to put a coupler on it. Use the four included garb screws and place them in the coupler using your Allen wrench. As you look inside the barrel of the coupler, notice the little shelf where it transitions from a five millimeter hole to an eight millimeter hole. As you put it on the motor, you wanna make sure that the shaft goes almost up to that transition point, but not quite. And just as with the pulley, we want to make sure that at least one of those little screws goes up against the flat part of the motor shaft. When we mount the Z motor, we want to make sure to tighten the two rear screws down and the inside front screw, but leave the outside front screw off for this step. As you mount your Z motor, be sure that the wire connector is facing the front of the printer. For this step, you want to use three M3 by 10 millimeter screws. Now we're going to work on attaching the Z-Rod holders, which will hold the vertical axis in place. Before you get started, make sure you check the fit of the Z-Rod, and if it doesn't fit, ream it out with an 8mm drill bit. After you check the fit, you can set the rod aside and save it for later. Now we're ready to proceed to assemble the Z-Rod holder for the bottom right side of the printer. The plastic in the middle of the thumb knob for the Z end stop will need to be cleared using an 8 1 8 inch drill bit. Embed an M3 nut in the thumb knob and then use the 20 millimeter socket head cap screw, which looks distinctly different from the regular button heads that we use for the rest of the build. Since this thumb knob will be twisted by the user during regular printer use, we need to secure it tightly with an additional M3 nut. That nut should butt right up against the one that's already embedded in the thumb knob. Thread the thumb knob assembly into the Z rod holder for the bottom right side. Here you can see I'm having some trouble, so I kind of chamfered the entry point with a drill bit, but don't go too deep. Proceed to screw this in until it's about eight to 10 millimeters deep. It's not important, we're gonna change this later anyhow, when we calibrate the printer. Now you wanna grab the Z-Rod holder and the Z-Rod holder for the bottom right side and three M3 nylock nuts. You wanna embed those nuts into the parts. Align the Z-Rod holder from the bottom right side so that it matches with that missing screw that we left empty on the Z motor. Secure this with a 12 millimeter M3 screw. Run another M3 by 12 millimeter screw through the bottom of the printer and up into the embedded nut. On the opposite side of the printer, insert two M3 by 12 millimeter screws. These two screws should be tightened into the nylon locking nuts that are embedded in the remaining Z-Rod holder. An end stop is a sensor switch that's used to limit the motion of the printer. Remove the end stop from the bag and set aside the wire. We'll use that in a later step. We need to prepare to mount the end stop. To do this, take two M3 by 16 millimeter socket head cap screws. Again, different than the button heads we usually use. Run those screws through the holes on the top of the end stop, and then add the three millimeter Y end stop standoffs underneath the end stop switch. Right behind the Z motor, there are two empty holes. Place the end stop there. Be sure that the lever that triggers the end stop switch faces the front of the printer. Notice that the standoffs appear to make the end stop switch float off the bottom of the printer. Flip the printer over, and add two M3 nylock nuts to those screws. 
It's going to be kind of difficult because one of them is butted right up against the NEMA 17 stepper motor. And of course, tighten these up. We've made some great progress and now it's time to mount the electronics board to the bottom of the printer. Insert four M3 by 35 millimeter screws so that they protrude through the bottom of the printer. Add the 11 millimeter plastic electronic standoffs to the bottom of the printer from the protruding 35 millimeter screws. On top of that, you're gonna place the electronics board. Make sure that you align the USB connector on the board with the hole on the left side of the printer. Don't be alarmed if there's a lot of extra screws sticking out after you put the board on. We're gonna use that later to manage our cables and wires. Secure the board using four M3 nylock nuts. This can take some real patience because of the length of the screws. Add four additional M3 nylock nuts to the tops of the posts, but don't tighten them all the way. Tighten them just far enough so that the end of the screw is flush with the nylock retainer on the nut. Use pairs of the four inch cable ties to make three sets of chain linked cable ties. Let's flash forward and take a look at the finished printer. It will be quite a mess underneath the printer unless we keep the wires well organized and routed like you see here. The chain linked zip tied pairs that we made can be attached to each of the posts. However, one of the posts on the outside towards the front of the printer won't have this on there. That's because we don't need to route wires along that part. It's important that you only tighten one of the zip ties on each chain linked pair to the posts. And remember, keep that other one in the front empty. You don't need anything there. Be sure that you only trim the excess zip tie off of the part that's already tightened. Leave the other loops open. We're going to run wires through there later on. For the final step, we're going to attach the rear Y-rod holders to the printer. Start by embedding the four nylock nuts into those parts. On the bottom of the printer, you'll find four holes just behind the electronics. Place four M3 by 12 millimeter screws in those holes. Tighten those screws into the embedded nylock nuts that we placed in the Y-rod holders. Now that we've finished up, let's take one last look at the printer. And finally, from the bottom. Next is step three, where we're gonna assemble the extruder that'll keep the plastic moving. 